Welcome back to ICU Point of View. We're placing a midline catheter today. Now, a midline is a variable thing. It's really anything that's long enough you can't reasonably call it an IV, but not so long that it ends centrally, that is, past the axilla in a deep vein. They vary a lot in terms of hardware. This is about the largest one you'll see. It's 15 centimeters and is placed through a sheath in a modified Seldinger technique, much like a pick. Smaller devices are placed like an IV or like maybe a radial A-line. They also vary in how sterile they're placed. At the end of the day, it's just a big IV and probably doesn't need to be sterile. This particular kit is a sterile kit, so we are placing it in a more or less sterile fashion. These are going to be placed in one of the arm veins. Typically, we'll start with the basilic, uh, but the brachial is also viable, and that's what we're using today. You can try the cephalic. It usually looks good, but tends to be hard to access. We found a good vein here, so we're going to infiltrate lidocaine in the usual manner. So we're using a small bore needle, we're lining up with the vessel, and we're going to hold the syringe at a very flat angle just to raise a wheel at the skin. And then we're going to infiltrate in a deeper tract guided by the ultrasound. In this case, I think it's good to numb deeper as well. The dilator can be a little uncomfortable otherwise. We're going to try to numb right up to the level of the vessel. We'll now make our access attempt, and we're using the introducer needle that comes in the kit. This is quite small compared to other devices. It's only 21 gauge, just like a micropuncture needle. You don't need a syringe on it, but I would say that for any difficult vein, it is helpful to have. It gives you immediate feedback of when you've entered the lumen of the vessel compared to just watching for passive reflux of blood. And again, this is a small needle, so that comes slowly. When you have active aspiration, you get much quicker feedback, even when you have poor visualization of the vessel. Some people find it a little unwieldy to have the syringe, but again, I think it tends to help. Otherwise, we're using the same technique as always, continuously following our needle tip. See the separate video for that technique. You see that as soon as we enter the tissue, we've set up a continuous, brisk, but small amplitude bouncing movement with the needle, which helps our visualization by displacing tissue. And we're going to follow our way all the way down to, in this case, the brachial vein, avoiding the nearby artery and also a nearby nerve bundle, which can be hard to see. Sometimes you'll have to rely on patient's complaints if you do hit it. If you're good at nerve blocks and similar, you're probably going to be better at noticing that. The basilic is easier to manage because it's farther away from that brachial bundle, but it is not always viable. We have flash now, you see continuous reflux of blood. We're gonna stabilize the needle, remove the syringe, and attempt to pass the small wire that comes in the kit. As always, instead of thumbing the whole thing in, we thumb in just a portion, and once it's captured by the needle, we try to pump the rest of it in with our arm. Here, it does not pass. So rather than try to force it, we're gonna remove it, reapply our syringe, and make sure that we still have aspiration of blood, proving that we're intraluminal. In fact, we do not. So we're going to adjust now, and the first adjustment should always be withdrawing a bit because you tend to go too deep. We do that, now we have blood again, so we're going to try again with the wire. Generally, like an IV, this is easier with a tourniquet on the arm, and sometimes the wire will hang up on the tourniquet, but usually will still pass. You can always have someone drop the tourniquet if need be. In this case, wire passes pretty easily, so needle comes out. We can now pass the combined dilator sheath. No skin nick is generally needed. Occasionally a tiny one may help, but this passes pretty easily. And dilation is similar to other dilations. As always, holding quite close to the tip, not high up. It's sometimes a little counter-traction on the skin, and then the hand goes to the wire, and we're going to continuously rack it back and forth as we advance the dilator, confirming that it moves freely and is not kinking. Advance it all the way to the top. To set up this PLOA, we're going to twist the core 90 degrees to unlock it and then remove it and the wire simultaneously. This should immediately bleed at you very briskly. If not, it's not in place. The catheter now passes directly through the sheath. It does not advance over a wire. The wire in this kit doesn't even really fit through it. We'll now peel away the sheath. Draw it back towards you a few centimeters. Roll your fingers against each other until the top splits and then pull apart the level of the skin. Pull it back out and repeat. Don't just pull apart at the skin level. That tends to widen the hole. And don't worry, you're going to pull the catheter out. You have plenty in there. 
Once it comes apart, push the catheter back in, it usually passes pretty easily, and you now have a midline. It's a good idea to confirm that both lumens aspirate and flush freely, although there's little reason they should not work. And we will now get set to dress. One challenge with these peel away sheaths is that there tends to be oozing around the catheter. The hole you dilated is actually larger than the actual cannula, so they tend to ooze. So I'll usually hold pressure at the site for a good two or three minutes, otherwise, it'll usually soil your dressing. And this time passes pretty slowly, so I try to set up other things while I do it. Sometimes it just won't stop, and you have to accept that the dressing will probably need to be changed later once it's settled down. Once we're done with pressure, we'll clean the whole area with chlorhexidine as always, and we let it dry, and we'll get set to secure the device. Now this comes with a stat lock sutureless securing device, just like for picks, and I mean they're available for most catheters. I think it's always good to use, I would almost never suture these. So it starts with a little bit of skin prep, which helps everything to stick, and then the stat lock. The arrows on this face toward the patient, it slips under the hub and the little blue posts slide into the holes. You snap down the little doors, do this first, and then you can secure it to the patient by pulling out one and then the other of the adhesive wings. Make sure you secure it in the position you want it to remain. And then dress it like any line. In this case, we're using the same chlorhexidine impregnated dressings we use for central lines.